intellectual property or IP, a very misunderstood topic. It's not a very exciting topic, but there are four different types of IP and it's very important to understand the four types of IP. First, the patent. People always talk about patents. You hear people saying, oh, I have this great idea, I'm gonna patent that. Oh, this is a great name for this product, I'm gonna patent that. It's very misunderstood. Patents are basically the right to exclude other people from making whatever you've created. There are some crazy patents. For example, there's actually a patent for a bird diaper. That would mean that if anyone other than that person decided they were gonna make a bird diaper, that person could have stopped them from making the bird diaper. But the way it works is, it's an exchange with the government. You're excluding other people from making your bird diaper, but you have to disclose how that bird diaper is made in detail. It's online, it's at the USPTO. You have to disclose that, and then after your patent runs out, which could be anywhere from 14 to 17 years to 20 years, depending on when you got your patent, at that time, the rest of the world can just go right ahead and make bird diapers. So there are two types of patents. There's the utility patent and then there's design patents. But the whole thing to understand about it is it doesn't give you the right to make whatever you've created. Because for example, with our bird diaper, there might be something that's used in that that someone else has a patent on. So you might have to go and ask them for the use of their, let's say, Velcro adhesives for the bird diaper. Now, that can get really complicated, and this patents is an area, there's just been a huge change in the law in the US, and it's an area that you must, must consult with a professional, and often that is a patent attorney. Understanding that you're not gonna patent a name gives you a little bit more information. What are you gonna do with a name, though? A name is something you can trademark, you can copyright. A trademark is something, one of the most famous trademarks would be Coca-Cola, Apple. These are brands. So what you're doing is that trademark for Coca-Cola on the bottle tells you that if I pour the contents of that bottle into my glass, I as a consumer am protected. I'm not gonna get Pepsi. I am going to get Coca-Cola. That's the deal that is made, so the exchange is Coca-Cola pays for that trademark, they have the right to use it, and as long as they renew it, they get to keep using it. Now, Coca-Cola is a really great example of a trade secret. So, a trade secret is often used instead of a patent. So, if you think about the recipe for Coca-Cola, that has been around for over 100 years. If they would have patented the recipe and the process for making Coca-Cola way back when, it would have long since been an expired patent and then everyone in the world would know how to make Coca-Cola. So what they do instead is they keep it as a trade secret. You don't necessarily have to go to an attorney to protect a trade secret because there isn't any way of filing like there is for a patent, a trademark, or a copyright. So with trade secrets, you do have to consult with a professional to make sure that however you're protecting it is proper and will meet whatever state law it applies to you. Now, with Coke, they do something really cool with it. They actually have divided up the secrets so there's very few people who know the entire process. There's restaurants where there's secret recipes and you'll actually have different kitchens where part of the process is done in one kitchen, part of the process is done in a different kitchen. There's many people will say, well, hey, I don't have any trade secrets, but things like customer lists, supplier relationships, these are trade secrets. Know-how about how you put together your software, trade secret. So with, with trade secrets, they're, they're basically free to protect, but the very important thing about them is once the cat's out of the bag, that's it, no more trade secrets. So it's a pro and con between trying to patent something and keeping it as a trade secret. A final piece of IP is copyrights. Copyright does not mean the right to copy. So what it means is that if you, once I write something down, once this video is recorded, someone has copyright in this video. And then 
that doesn't mean that nobody can copy it. What it means is that you have to figure out what are the permissions of use. For example, there's a great site, Creative Commons, where people put things on there, photographs and videos, and people can come and use them once you read the permissions. So the copyright is with the author. It lasts for the life of the author plus um, a number of years that keeps increasing. Uh, so as an author, you don't really have much to worry about during your lifetime, but then it becomes really interesting after someone dies. And a really good example of that is with Walt Disney, because the things that Walt Disney has created are all copywritten, but Walt Disney has passed away many years ago. So a lot of people refer to copyright as kind of the Disney law because the years after the author's death keeps getting bigger and bigger. So those are the four types of IP. You have your patents, your trademarks, and your copyrights, and your trade secrets. And for those of you who are still watching, thank you. And you might want to ask yourself, why? Why do I care about this? Because actually almost half the value of most companies in the US and the EU is intangible assets. And those intangible assets are intellectual property. It's the patents, the trademarks, the copyrights, and the trade secrets. So make sure that you understand what those things are so you can make sure that you protect them.